in sunny central Portugal. It's actually getting pretty hot. The first time I've seen the thermometer sign on the weather app since last summer. Today I'm back to a project I've had in mind for this kitchen space. If you're new here, go and check out the time-lapse video of our first year and you can see the room that we started with and you'll see how much of a difference we've made. There's still a long way to go but I mean just look how beautiful it is looking considering this was a dusty old barn. So when we first moved here the door which is now this that we made this is a temporary door we are planning to maybe put sliding french doors in there eventually but it's been amazing <laughs> to let light in because the old barn door did not but we have kept the wood of the old barn door so i wanted to incorporate it somehow so i'm planning today to work on making sort of a spice rack shelving Thing <laughs> with the old wood it just needs a bit of TLC some sanding and some oiling so I'm gonna work on that see what we've got and then make a plan for something to hold our spices I think we'll hang it up on the wall we'll see drilling into this wall has not been fun so far so what's your plan for the day Frankie is it this This is the wood I've got to work with. I think there's so much character in some of it. Some of it is probably not usable. But I'm gonna take this all apart and see what we've got. did actually make this into a little box before which is why there's these new ah, screws in there there are so many earwigs in this on this land I think these four pieces are usable got these ones that I think are mostly unusable um, but this has got a really gorgeous texture to it so I might just try and do something with it even if it's with some hooks on to hang our coats and it can just be on the wall we'll see if I sand it and oil it what it looks like these have got some more pesky nails to pull out here. so I think I'm gonna give these all just a wash first then let them dry a bit it's a really hot day so it shouldn't take too long This is going to dry so quick, I can already see this is almost dry compared to this last one. Um, the water level, we've been watering for the garden from this, which is why it's so low. I want to 
empty it this evening and then refill it with fresh water because it's starting to not look very nice. But perfect timing to leave this to dry because Yuan is making us some lunch. Is it fried egg, fried egg butties. Mm -hmm. Thanks chickens. I'm thinking a very <laughs> simple design, so five shelves and then along the side I don't know if I'm going to have them this long so whether I'm going to have to use two pieces or something I don't know. Alright, let's go see how the wood is drying. There's a golden oriole about, if you can hear it singing <laughs> in the background. Yeah, still a little bit longer to go. I do actually have some other pieces that could be used if needs be. Oh, I like this one with the hole in actually. These are all pretty good. That's got a cool texture. So maybe I'm going to give these a wash too actually. Get these screws out. Bit warm isn't it sausage? Time to make some mizudashi. We need to find a nice green tea. We have a few different ones. Um, should we go super fancy? Let's do Kyokuru. Kyokuru is one of the highest grade Japanese green teas. And it's got this beautiful sweetness. some cool water, leave for a couple of minutes, and it will be delicious. <laughs> Trying to do this with one hand is uh, not being successful. I would come and sit in the shade of this lovely cork oak for a little while because I can hear all the golden orioles over here so maybe I might be able to see one but Albie has followed me so <laughs> they may be put off by her yeah, He's got some strimming to do down here seem to be hanging out in these eucalyptus trees that's where the sound's coming from but I did see one fly through our land yesterday so if I sit quietly under the cork oak for a while they might come they're so loud over here I don't think I'm going to see them fly over here. I've heard them a lot though, and I think the back road passes under those trees. I did find this cool old bottle on our wall. It's broken, but maybe with some dried flowers in and a bit of a clean up. Maybe it'll look nice. Maybe it'll look like rubbish. <laughs> we'll see. Looks like Yuan might be bottling up some wine. I didn't see the orioles, but I think they're just underneath that eucalyptus, which the back road goes to. Yeah. So if we rode, a, rode our bikes over there, then we would spot them.
Things haven't gone super smoothly. <laughs> Shot a piece of the wood into my leg, but not very hard, it was fine. But could have been, it's definitely not a safe way to do it. Then it made the table collapse. And then once I tried to set the generator back up, it wouldn't fire up and I noticed it was leaking. We got sent an upgrade on our solar battery, which is exciting. And it does mean that it can power the sanders we've got I'm just realising that I should cut them all before I sand them all completely. So I've just been hand sanding a bit. These will be the faces of the shelves. I think there is so much character in them. So I'm really excited to see them oiled up. And then this didn't, I think, even lose, yeah, didn't even lose a bar. So I'm really impressed with you, Bluetti. Well done. And now we're just going to empty the reservoir and there's a little bit left in the IBC as well of water and then pump some up out of the well. Oh I forgot I had these two, these ones still here. <laughs> oh well, new project for those. Just as I was about to finish emptying I realised that we normally use the generator for the water pump so I've halted here. <laughs> I'm going to try and clean this out and then I think we'll try the pump on the new power bank in the morning just in case it does empty it and then we can charge it when it's sunny again. guys fire season has officially <laughs> started we had a huge fire not far from here it's about 10 miles from us yesterday with planes and helicopters flying over us all day because we're close to the dam so that's where they go to collect water and then we've had more this morning I've looked on the app and it doesn't look like there's a fire close by but we shall see and we've got a really hot four days coming up so Hopefully there won't be too many, but with the drought we've had, it's uh, it's not good. It's quite a scary aspect of living here, obviously something we're completely not used to. So yeah, the, the planes are quite cool though, because they fly really close to us. to the shops we're gonna get a vent a couple of vents for the cabin to increase the airflow in there because it gets very hot even though we've insulated it what are you showing me you still got your slippers on <laughs> <laughs> might want to change those Ready to go. Oh, oh. 
How's it going? Nice hot day today. It's going to be super hot this weekend, as I'm sure we've mentioned about a hundred times already this video. Us being Welsh, we're not used to the heat, so when it does happen, we prepare for it as if it's like some epic thing that no one in the world has to deal with. But <laughs> we're getting there, we're acclimatising. So yeah, just wanted to take a bit of time really to show one of the, or explain one of the problems that we sometimes have living off grid. And it kind of ties perfectly in with the fact that the generator's just broken. So a lot of the tasks that we do sort of weekly, such as watering the garden, so we need to take water out of the out of the well with the pump, we need to use tools that we don't have batteries for, we need to charge batteries, etc. etc. So you may have come across these solar power bank things. Like it's kind of like a battery generator, but able to be charged by the sun. We I don't know if you know we've always had a small one, Bluetti, who have very kindly sent us their EB70 model to test out and review. So we're going to try and test it out properly with some of the more powerful things that we would normally use the generator for. So we'll take you along for the ride with that one. Bluetti have not given us any kind of, what's the word, like script to go on. So this is completely our own honest review and test. So here we are, here is the Bluetti. I'm going to turn it all on. The cool box makes a bit of a noise. But we currently have seven things being powered by or charging and it's drawing an output of 73 watts. So this can keep doing this for quite a while. This is the thing that really impressed us with this compared to the model below it is how long it keeps its charge for. It does take maybe five or six hours to charge from like 20% up to full yeah the fact that it can do so much at the same time means that we can sort of power stuff all up in the morning and try and get everything charged up and then it gives us the afternoon then to be able to charge it back up for the next day we have got a three-way fridge with some with gas 12 volt and 240 volt 240 watt i'm not sure i'm rubbish at electronic turn this off because it's a bit loud so yeah so far the the difference that this has made compared to the one with the one below it is quite surprising really I don't think I was expecting it to I would definitely say that if if you were going to buy one of these things that I would definitely spend as much as your budget allows rather than trying to spend less because the extra capacity that they actually have is quite impressive so this is a thousand watt out AC output they do have one that's 2000 watt output we will test out the water pump we will also test out the jigsaw it, without doubt probably the most useful thing about it is that like it's really quite light so you can move it around quite easily if you charge it up one day and then you can take it with you it would happily do a weekend camping yeah super handy for any off-gridder for sure especially if you're umming and ahhing about going for full solar setup this is definitely a stopgap that could last you a few years before needing to take the step up to like washing machine and like a fridge. But again, it's, this is power powering the cool box for a few hours at a time, no problem at all, enough to get me cold beer, which is all I need a fridge for really. So yeah, super, super impressed. Be expecting some rain so last night I clamped all the wood just to see if I could get it to 
straighten out a little bit so hopefully that's worked a little bit Right, so we're going to have a go at putting two air vents into the cabin, one low, one high, try and encourage some air circulation. We currently don't have any ventilation in the building at the moment, apart from the fact that the door is quite sort of holy, it's got sort of gaps in it, so that provides some sort of air circulation. I don't know, if, so it's a strange thing about Portugal, right, it's a really, really hot day, well it was, it's probably dropped to about mid-twenties now. You can see some blue sky behind me. If I turn around, I'll try and do so slowly. Big, big grey cloud behind us. I think it might rain. Even though the forecast says it's not going to. But I think it's going to. So the air vent is going to go just to the right of the door there. Something that I couldn't find really was like a two-piece one that would give you like almost like a, like a pipe, a mini pipe that goes through the wall. So what I have managed to find is some plastic pipe. It's an old water pipe. So I'm going to cut that down with the angle grinder, which I will plug into the Blue Eti. Moment of truth. That's a yes. So test number one was the angle grinder, which passed with flying colours. The angle grinder is 230 volts, 500 watts. Make of that what you will. To me, it's like another language. I have no idea. This, which is a Black & Decker, no sponsorship or nothing. <laughs> Black & Decker is 230 volts. 50 hertz, 650 watts. So I can only assume because the 650 is bigger than the 500, that this is going to be more of a test for it. So we will see what happens. Up to 91 watt output, but it makes it move. So let's see what happens. Here's my glasses. So what I'm doing is just cutting around this little hole here so I can fit my little plastic tube in. Just realised I need the drill to put a hole in it. Moment. Not touch the side. So far, it's not even missed a beat. Right. I'm trying to make sure all my clothes aren't covered in holes and oil stains. <laughs> so I found this farmer jacket in the barn. It's probably got spiders living in the pockets. So. They're looking really good. I really wasn't sure whether to use this darker oil, but I'm really happy with how it's come out. There's this really beautiful, like, orangey colour.
coming through so these are all dry now so I need to screw some holes in and put it together I do need to charge up the drill battery so I'm on my way to find Yuan because he's got the power bank still drilling holes in our cabin can I borrow the power bank? check out this for versatile Okay. On top of a step ladder. <laughs> Super safe, of course. As is always the way with that. You're good at uh, ladders, aren't you? Not wobbling on them. I do like ladders. Not really. <laughs> so one thing the Blue Etty doesn't do is remind you to put things on charge that need to be on charge. My phone just ran out of battery there, which is why we cut that footage short but now we have finished and we now have two vents on the cabin. There we are, so this is the one on the front. Logic being that this is the side of the building that receives most of the wind. So I was thinking that hopefully the wind would well some some wind would go in there and it would push the hot air that's at the top of the building through back to the vent at the back of the building which is at the top hopefully then pushing the hot air out please let me know if my logic is is flawed on this one fingers crossed and please excuse the back of the building we do need to come and fix all this up one day so there you have it there's our air vent anything to take the edge off in the hot summer's day really i know the obvious one is to put more insulation in but it's so expensive and putting something else on top of the roof maybe but it's supposed to be a temporary building, so we don't want to do anything too permanent. We don't want to spend too much money, etc. So anything we can get away with is good for now. This is my very scientific workings out. So the average spice jar is about 10 centimetres, um, no, 10 millimetres. And Nick will tell me off for not knowing this. 10 centimetres, 100 millimetres. So I've gone with 14, 13 and then two 11s. So we can have the smaller ones up there and then this can make space for any slightly bigger jars. Hopefully that's going to work. And then I've just marked out on here in pencil where the shelves should sit. So I'm going to screw two holes in each of these and I'm hoping it's gonna fit okay because even after my clamping it did improve them but it's still just a very wonky piece of wood I think this line here is not straight we shall see how it goes but I am so happy with how it's looking probably could do with another layer but um, we'll see Um, remember, you can do that on the table. Oh, yeah. Enjoy. Thanks. <laughs> so, I've screwed in the holes, and then I'm just doing what I think is called a countersink, maybe, just so that the, the screw will sit more flush with the wood rather than sticking out. I'm thinking if I just clamp this up and use this, then I should get the marks for where to make the holes in the other piece. Hopefully this works. Maybe I'm the first carpenter to use a barbecue skewer. Thank you. 
You're like in your little sleeping bag there. <laughs> Happy beans. <laughs> I think it's under that snake. In the middle of the road. Yeah, he's like doing it definitely to build up his strength behind him. Step back again. They can't do much. <laughs> One mistake I made with drilling these holes was that I forgot to take into account that these two top shelves were narrower than these ones, so these holes were in the wrong place. But one thing I am thinking, I'm going to re-oil it and that should hide them and there's lots of marks in it anyway, but then I was thinking whether to cut this here a bit like I've done on the shelf in the kitchen so it kind of softens this and takes away like the harsh angle here so I wonder if with the jigsaw whether I could kind of get a nice curve and then re-oil it which will hide this and I'll re-oil over the screws as well just to hide them a, a bit more So I think this looks better, I did catch a little bit but I'll just sand and oil, so we'll try the other side.
excuse my ridiculous hat we haven't yet got round to pumping the water back into the reservoir so we're going to give it a go now our seedlings have been <laughs> living in there soaking up the last bit but yeah today is definitely the kind of day you want to be in some cold water so let's see if the bluetti can do it i think this is like the final the final test or like the one that i would be most happy with it being able to do because i have to drag the generator up and down the land to water the garden so if it can do this Lovely. game changer also as we are in wildfire zone when there is a fire all the electric goes down so having either a generator or something like this so you can pump water is really important so I would have both to be honest if you're in a, in a fire zone because being able to put water a, around the ground when there's a fire close by is yeah gonna save you big time. What were you reading before that we're 96% of Portugal is it still in drought? Yeah in extreme drought. The well is still so much lower than it should be. Yeah. Right, are we ready? Where's the end of the pipe? Here. Okay. Let's make it further away. <laughs> yeah. Moment of truth, Luretti. Nothing. Output. Output 270 watt. Wait, but it takes a while for the water to come up. It's not making a noise. Oh! But then again, should it make a noise? It's always making a noise because of the generator. I think so. I can feel the water <laughs> in the pipes. Ooh. Wow, 420 watts. It's working, everyone. <laughs> right, so it's currently on. Uh, it's got 80%. You can't really see the bars. This is it with the uh, water pump on. It's been doing it for about 10 minutes and we've just dropped down from 80% to 60%. Oh, so the tank is half full, looking a bit murky. <laughs> So we've decided to stop now, I think it's still on 40%. Yep, yeah, we've still got 42 bars there. So I think that's pretty good. I think I could water my whole garden without losing too much. Very, very happy about that. And it's a lot quieter than having a generator running. We were talking about getting some brackets to mount it to the wall. But then I remembered we've got the old hinges from the door, so it'd be really cool if we can use these to incorporate everything that used to be the door. This one's a bit bent, so I'm thinking one on the bottom shelf and one on the top. So I'm going to give it a quick scrub with some vinegar and see how it comes up. Okay, it's really cool how that's come out. Obviously it wasn't as bad as this one, but it's got like this nice patina to it. This one is uh, not coming up as well yet, but I think if I left it overnight in the vinegar, maybe it would come up well, but I really want to get it on the wall. <laughs> so I'm going to put this one on for now and uh, see how we go, because drilling into the kitchen wall is never an easy task, so it might take us the next hour just to do that. <laughs> I want to use this lip to add extra support so put it in the middle here and then I'm going to do it on the bottom. our spices on it 
and that's the broken jar I found over on our wall with some lavender I dried in it. You can't see it's broken from here. <laughs> I think we want to come up with some ways to store the spices so that they all look kind of nice and succinct together. Maybe some jars like this. I'm absolutely over the moon with how that's come together. We do need to put the other hinge on here but that one is just such a nightmare to drill into these breeze blocks but my dad is coming to visit next week so hopefully he's going to bring the drills from Andy which might make this more easy. And then we've also found the tiles I think we're going to use so everything's coming together. sitting with my feet in the nice cold water of the reservoir to cool off after um, doing all that building work. It's definitely not the temperature to be trying to drill holes into breeze blocks. I'm going to sign off the video here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this slightly longer video. Now we're not doing the midweek ones. I think these Saturday videos will end up being much longer. There's another plane coming over. They've been coming over all day. But yeah, hope you have a wonderful weekend and we will see you in the next one. Take care.